Okay, so let's take a look at alcohols and phenols. We know that alcohols contain a hydroxy group, and this hydroxy group is attached to an sp3 center. And the sp3 center is tetrahedral in geometry, angle of 109.5 degrees. It is tetrahedral. It is possible to have primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols, as we've seen before from our previous class. We took a look at this first example. Here's a primary alcohol because this carbon is attached to only one carbon. If we look at this carbon, it's attached to two carbons directly, and so it's a secondary alcohol. And then finally over here, we have an example of a tertiary alcohol in which there are three carbons directly attached to the carbon bearing the hydroxyl group. I want to emphasize it is the carbon bearing the hydroxyl group. In addition to that, we have come across our vinyl alcohols. Remember the hydroxyl group attached directly to the carbon of the double bond. This is our vinyl position, so that's a vinyl alcohol. Not to be confused with our example over here of our allyl alcohol, in which the hydroxyl group is attached to the allylic position. In addition, we've seen some rather different types of alcohols, such as this halohydrin, in which the hydroxyl group and the bromo are on consecutive carbons. They are said to be in a vicinal relationship. Just want to emphasize that, you remind ourselves of a term. And also, if we look at our benzyl alcohol, okay? This is our aromatic group. That's the benzyl carbon. This is the benzyl alcohol, but the benzyl alcohol is also a primary alcohol. So that's a benzyl alcohol. So yes, we have to be aware of naming these, but we should also be aware of some common names that are going to come across. Obviously, as you can see, the suffix for alcohols is OL. We're going to have allyl alcohol, we've just seen, benzyl alcohol, we've just seen, terbutyl alcohol, as the name suggests, is a terbutyl group with a hydroxyl attached. So please be aware of these common names as we go through our rules. So if we look at the first rule, it says, Identify the longest continuous carbon chain containing the hydroxyl group. This is the parent chain. Want to reiterate something we've always focused on. It is important to remember that kinks and bends and turns are allowed. And we use that to allow ourselves to manipulate our stereochemistry to a certain extent. So if we look at this carbon chain, like so, we can count the carbons. One, two, three, four, five. We know the prefix for five is pent. So this becomes pentanol, okay? OL because it's a hydroxyl, an alcohol. Pent because there are five carbons. AN because it's saturated. And so there are all single bonds in this group. Obviously, the hydroxyl group is at the lowest number possible. It says begin numbering at the end nearest the hydroxyl group. Always the lowest number. So we take a look at another example over here. Obviously... In this example, we can either go one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to count from right to left in this direction. That will give us the lower number. So this becomes five, this becomes six, this becomes seven, and this becomes eight. And so consequently, now this is four octanol. Okay? Four is the position of the hydroxyl group. AN tells us it's all single bonds, and again, the OL tells us it's the alcohol. We move a little further down the page. It says, begin numbering at the end nearest the hydroxyl group. The hydroxyl group represents the alcohol functional group, and so must have the lowest number possible. Remember, we're talking about functionality, and functional groups should have the lowest number possible. So, if we stick this in, obviously, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this becomes two heptanol. That's fine. That works very nicely. Okay. But if we then introduce something like this, we have both an alcohol and an alkene as functional groups. I want to emphasize that the alcohol is the most important functional group. So this being the most important is the suffix. And the alkene is secondary. So when we're numbering these double substituents or multifunctional groups, the alcohol comes first in terms of numbering. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7. So this now becomes 3, hep, 10, 2, all. The 3 tells me the position of the double bond. The 2 tells me the position of the alcohol. Notice that we've now broken the name at the end. So we've got EN to indicate the alkene and OL to indicate the alcohol. Obviously, since it's a double bond, the next question I have to ask you is, is it E or Z? Well, we should recognize that there's a hydrogen attached here and a hydrogen attached here. So they're both high priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond, making that an E stereoisomer. So this becomes 3E, 3 heptanol. Three Take another example. Okay. okay. Now put the double bond and the alcohol a little further away. If we look